they've beaten me up, brutally handled me, put me in police lockup. Yeah, and so what else can they do to me? I think the only thing that they can do to shut me up is to lock me up in jail and throw away the key. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm going to stop. Fami Reza is probably best remembered for this image. A clown face of former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak that went viral. His political art and activism has landed him in trouble for decades. One of his most recent charges under the Media and Communications Act is for creating this missing poster of the current health minister, asking if anyone has seen him. Since we last spoke to Fami, he's been arrested and is now facing more lawsuits over his art. So tell us who you are and why you are being censored. Uh, my name is Fahmi Reza. I'm being censored for this. A missing poster of the health minister that I posted last year. Uh, but this is not the first time I'm being persecuted. Under our country's internet law, Section 2331A of the Communications and Multimedia Act of 1998. And if I'm charged and convicted, I may face a one-year prison sentence and a 50,000 ringgit fine, just over a poster. Tell us what happened that morning when you got a call from the police. So the morning I got the call from the police, they asked me to come in to the station for questioning. And I asked them over what matter. They said over one of my posting. The, the main question that popped into my head is, which one? Because I made so many posting on a daily basis that trigger so many people. Tell us about your first experience being censored. My first experience um, was actually back in 2004 over this poster. It says, stop the abuse of police power. Hentikan salah guna kuasa polis. It was actually a poster I designed for a protest against police brutality. And I got arrested. I got beaten up. I got uh, put in police lockup over this poster. The whole experience just made me more angry because this was a poster, you know, against police brutality and their response is to brutalize me. But it made me more determined, you know, to fight against uh, injustice. I think because of my first experience with the police brutality poster being so extreme, I think that made me less afraid Actually, this is not the first time I got called in for questioning. And it's not the first time I'm being investigated under this specific law. I made this Najib Clown graphic back in 2016, yeah? because of his involvement in the 1MDB scandal. This 1MDB scandal, uh, the, the kind of, the level of corruption is, is, is legendary. The whole 1MDB scandal turned the whole country into a circus. And the biggest clown of all was ex-Prime Minister Najib Raza, you know, who siphoned billions of dollars from uh, the public. Tell us what has inspired your art. Punk music. I started listening to punk when I was 15 and I continued uh, to be inspired by punk music which I consider as protest music and if you look, most of my graphics are protest graphics or protest art. The uh, rebelliousness yeah, of punk music continue to inspire me until today. One thing that I learned from punk music is uh, the anti-authoritarian attitude to question authority and also the DIY, do-it-yourself ethic. You know, you don't have to wait for someone else to speak up. Just do it yourself. Those are the things that I think uh, as an activist, you know, uh, continue to inspire me to speak up, you know, and, and push for social change using art as a medium. Tell us more about your political beliefs. When it comes to Malaysian politics, I think I've always uh, hold on to the belief that you 
cannot trust politicians in general on all sides. Right now in Malaysia, even though um, they claim that it's a democracy, but it's not. Uh, representative democracy is not real democracy. Regular people, citizens in general, have no say in decisions that affect our lives. It's important for us as citizens uh, to I think have more say, you know, to push for more direct forms of democracy yeah, where people are directly involved in decision making, you know, take away power uh, from politicians. Because right now, Malaysia is turning into a two party system, just like any other liberal democracies. That's not democratic enough. So right now, I think, well, I believe, yeah, we need to push for more democracy in Malaysia. What have some of the recent challenges been for you as a political artist? Uh, during the pandemic, you know, uh, to make ends meet, uh, I started uh, a Patreon account. And to my surprise, um, there were a lot of people who support my work and want to see me continue to produce the kind of political graphics that I've been doing for the past 20 years. Uh, right now in Malaysia, it's not just the media is being heavily controlled, but even social media. We have internet laws that actually make it a crime for you to post anything uh, that the government considered as uh, being seditious against the government. As an activist who predominantly use graphic design, you know, political graphics are being posted on social media. The challenge is there will always somebody who will get upset over my postings, over my graphics, who will lodge a police report against me. What does it say about the people in power who try to silence Fami Reza? I think it's a joke for a big government to go after a small graphic designer. In a country where satire is being seen as a threat by the government, I think it's more important for us to defend and protect you know, this form of expression. Malaysia's government has imposed a state of emergency to control the pandemic, pushing through an additional fake news law that would give it even more power to crack down on online criticism. So, with a fake news law, it's easy for the government to label any communication or any uh, satirical work as being false or being fake. Or this kind of fake news law, uh, it just makes it easier for the government to go after their critics, to silence dissent in order to keep themselves in power. I think when it comes to freedom of speech and freedom of expression, it's important for us to take a stand, to defend our right. It is, it's, our, it's in our constitution, under Article 10 of the Malaysian Constitution, basically says that as citizens, we have the right to freedom of speech and expression. So any forms of censorship you know, from the government, from the authorities, you know, uh, should be seen as being an infringement of our right to free speech. So I think as a matter of principle, it's important for me not to bow down to pressures and intimidation. That's why I never delete any of my posting because I, I stood by my artwork and my graphics and I will defend them against any forms of censorship. You've been censored so many times by the people in power. What effect has that had on you? I don't think I've ever toned down my work just because I've been uh, investigated. I think it shows that uh, my conviction is strong and I will continue to use my art as a weapon against corruption and against injustice. And I will never stop. What has the journey been like for you as an ordinary graphic artist that's gone up against some of the most powerful politicians in Malaysia? I started this journey 20 years ago, back in 2001, when I started to commit myself to doing pro bono graphic design work for NGOs and civil society movements that are pushing for change in Malaysia. That got me into trouble most of the time. I appreciate uh, the support that had been given to me and I think it uh, pushes me to continue to do what I do. It's important 
for us as citizens to be able to speak out, uh, to expose government wrongdoing, to share information openly and publicly without the fear of being persecuted for it. That's why in countries like Malaysia, Myanmar, and other supposedly democratic state, it's important for us to protect and defend our right to free speech and expression, and to fight against all forms of censorship. They can censor me as many times as they want, but I will never be silenced.